Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Second Star interview. I'm here with author Nell Cross Beckerman to discuss her latest book, When the Sky Glows. How are you doing today? That was perfect. <laughs> I love it. I promise, folks, we did not rehearse that. That was just a beautiful one of a kind moment. <laughs> uh, so, for those who haven't had a chance to read your picture book yet, which it does come out today, can you tell us a bit about your book? Yeah, you know, I was really inspired by the feeling I got when I saw a rainbow. You know, it's like you have that breathless, like, oh, look at this magical thing in the sky that's not going to last for very long. I'm almost holding my breath until it's over. And I'm seeing, have you seen it? Have you seen it? Has everyone seen it? Right. And how that, that bonds us all together for this very special magical sky and so I was trying to write just about a rainbow and then my writing friends were like well what other kind of shows are in skies and I was like oh wow you just opened up this book big time because there are so many amazing shows in skies yeah that's true that is very true so there is some research in the book which is really cool and gives some insight on certain as you called it shows in the sky I love that um so are you a big researcher normally or was this kind of oh yes yes I, <laughs> yes I mean almost to a, a fault like if I have to pick you know what kind of suitcase I'm gonna get I do a lot of research yeah, that's awesome. but my past um growing up my dad is actually a biologist and he would take me into his lab and we would work on research projects together in the in his laboratory I also used to be a um, TV producer oh, and I did lots of stories about the world's smallest guitar or <laughs> yeah, it was called the nano guitar. I, I got to go to a clean lab um, and all of that part of my job involved a lot of research. I'm just naturally curious. So it's a great part of my job that I just get to learn a lot, a lot of stuff. I do have to admit, I don't always retain that information. So to be honest, if you ask me now how a rainbow is formed, <laughs> I have to check my book because I don't remember. <laughs> but that's what it's there for, to go back to and have on your shelves for people who, who are like, how does a rainbow form? Be like, well, let me go check my fantastic picture book when the sky goes. <laughs> yes, books are an excellent source of research, for sure. That is 100% true. <laughs> so this is not your first book. So what have you uh, used from your previous book into this book? And then from this book, what have you learned to put into future books? That's such a great question. You know, so my first book is Down Under the Pier. And it's all about what, you know, a, a fun urban pier that has an amusement park on top, modeled after the Santa Monica Pier, my local pier, and <laughs> underneath um, is the even more magical fun of exploring nature at low tide when all the animals of the intertidal zone are visible, like the sea stars and the mussels and the barnacles. And I'd say what I learned from that book that I brought to this book is the idea that books can be a virtual field trip to exotic places that maybe you don't live close to. And what I try to do is I use words and sentences to give you the sensory feeling that you're actually there. That's what I try to do. That's what I try to do with this book. And when I talked to David Litchfield, the illustrator, he said one of the first things that struck him about this book is that it's like a trip around the whole world. There's scenes in Africa, Iceland, um, in Venezuela, um, and then, you know, in the U.S. So just that a book can take you on trips out of your normal home is what I tried to take from my last book to this book. I love that. That's really cool. And I want, you know, I want the, I got to get the exact quote you just said, but I want to put that like on a bookmark about how books can take you to different places. And it's so true. <laughs> they yeah. really can. It's the best part of them. Uh, what is your, do you have a favorite place where you've seen like a sky show something that's not a rainbow something like you personally like will always treasure that's such a great question um you know I was talking with David about whether or not kids appreciate sunrises and sunsets and you know it's something that we see every day right and I was realizing that the first sunset I remember was when I was um about in third grade 
And I'd gone with my dad. My, my grandparents lived in Tallahassee, Florida. And so every year, we, my dad and I would go travel from California to Tallahassee to see them. And everything felt different in Florida from LA. And I just remember the one time we went, we went to their backyard, which was huge. And the sun was setting. Oh. And it, it filled me up so <laughs> much with the orange and the huge expansiveness in the warm, humid evening that I said to my dad, I just have to run. And I just started running in circles <laughs> because this, this sunset just was giving me such a, a connected feeling. And so that's, that's one that, that's the first sky I remember as a kid that really made an impression on me. Oh. How beautiful too. It is true. And how fascinating the sky can look in from one place to another. And yet it's the same sky, you know, all around us, but it I, you know, I love that you said that. Cause that was another um, goal I wanted of this book is that even though we live all over the world, we are technically under the same skies. Yeah. That is our commonality. Um, so I, I love that you, you just mentioned that too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so to help out future writers out there, what are some things that inspire you and what you think might inspire others to write? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously I'm inspired by nature and therefore I highly advocate going outside a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, um, I have a, a, even though I live in Los Angeles, which is very urban, I'm lucky enough to live in Culver City where there are protected parklands with hikes. And I go on one many times a week and every time I see something different. And so for, and, and that inspires me. I get so many ideas about writing when I'm on my hikes. I even sold a book about this exact hike. <laughs> so um, so I, I advocate unplugging, um, t stepping away from your phone and going outside. It's, it's, it's obvious info, you know, advice, but actually doing it regularly is maybe not as hard. I, I know for me, it's, it's hard. Um, I mean, it's not as easy. So, so yeah, for, for writers, especially writers that are, in, are into like the kind of writing I do, which is about nature and how it makes you feel and so magical, you want to just, you know, ex ex express your joy uh, about nature to everyone go outside. <laughs> yeah. And hey, you can even take this picture book and go outside and read it with your family. And who knows, oh. maybe take a picture of the sky when you're reading it. And Yeah, you know, that's works. a great tip. I'm actually um, in the, the middle of developing a writing course for Storyteller Academy. Oh, it's nice. coming out in October, and it's all about writing about nature for kids. And one of the tips, I'm, this is a secret tip from my class, <laughs> is the idea that if it's something that you want to take a picture of, that's a good sign. It could be something you want to write about. Ooh, that is a really cool tip. I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah Cause it's, and it's also like kind of a good challenge too. Cause it's, how could you describe that picture? How could you describe it to someone who may not get to see the picture? So what words would you use to help capture that moment? Yeah. And I'd like to add, you don't have to just come up with these words on your own. While you're reading other books, a word might jump out at you. It's completely okay to write that word down to use in your own story. I do that a lot. Like <laughs> I have special writers. I love like Kate Messner and Liz Garden Scanlon who write amazingly about nature. And I get inspired by some of the words they use, you know, and I'm not talking about taking old sentences, but no. it's okay. Like if you see a word, there's a word in Down Under the Pier. It's, um, the word is festoon. My editor wasn't exactly sure what that word is. <laughs> so, you know, it's an unusual word and it gets called out a lot and nothing would make me happier than seeing the word festoon pop up in your story. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, everyone start using that word. <laughs> so going back to the picture element though of it, uh, how did you how did David come, no pun intended, into the picture? Did you select him or did your editor just send up different illustrators? How did that work? That is a great question because I think it was an unusual process. Okay. As a picture book writer, the common, uh, you know, the, the, the common word on the street is that authors are not involved with 
uh, who the editor selects for the illustrator. You know, a lot of people think, oh, who, who did I pick to illustrate the book? Right. Who's my, what, what friend did I call <laughs> up to? And, you know, they think that this, this team happens before the book gets sold. And in almost all cases, not all, but in almost all cases, that isn't how it works. The writer writes the text, sells the text to the publisher. The publisher then hires the illustrator. In this case, Andrea Welch, the, the editor at Beach Lane Books, Simon & Schuster, asked me if I had any inspiration suggestions Ooh. for illustrators. I was floored because Andrea has worked with the Fan Brothers, Brendan oh. Wetzel, big, big, you know, highly uh, awarded um, illustrators. So I was, you know, I was surprised that she was asking me, you know, I have one book under my belt, not more than that. Right. Uh, and I, I had somehow just started following David on Instagram and he stopped my scroll every time. His, his illustrations just glowed. They glowed. Yes. They literally glowed. His, they're they're his so talent. beautiful. Yes. His, his talent with light is especially magical. And so when I thought of who would, who would I suggest for making glowing skies, I said, David Litchfield seems like a natural <laughs> to me. And lucky for me, Andrew said, great idea. And a few weeks passed. I didn't think much of it. Yeah. Suddenly, David Litchfield followed me on Instagram. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and I went, oh, I wonder if that means something. And then a few days later, Andre told me, great news. We got David. I couldn't believe it. I oh. was such a fan. I could not believe he's going to be illustrating this book. That's amazing. That's so, yeah, his work is so beautiful. I, some of the picture books, I'll just, and I don't mean this in any offense to the writers, I'll just like stare at the pictures and then I'm like, oh, right, there are words on here. Let me go back really quick. Excuse me. That's, that's why I write. I write to give the illustrators a frame to hang their work on. I was an art history major. I'm obsessed with illustrators. I am their biggest fans. And to me, it's just, an honor that they illustrate what I wrote. I'm I'm writing for the illustration. So I'm 100% with you that like with picture books, it's all about the illustration. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay, I'm glad I'm <laughs> not a bad thing, but I'll sometimes forget the words for a moment. Oh man. So do you hope to work with David again in the future? It would be a dream. I'm actually, um, I, I got to meet David in person. I oh, went, to, he lives in England, right. in Bedford, England. And I happened to be going there this summer for another reason. And I said, I'm going to extend my trip by one day and hope that I can go oh. and actually meet David. And it somehow all worked out. We spent the day together and I just, like, we really got along and he was showing me some of his stuff. And one of the things he showed me, this is actually in an interview that's going to be um, between, we interview each other and it's going to be on, on oh, my fun. website, um, nellcrossbeckerman.com. I'll have to um, check it out. <laughs> yeah. But he showed me that um, for the page about the lightning, um, so the, the intro page has these these clouds right now this illustration is actually based on clouds he painted when he was a teenager oh. that he still has and so um you know he showed me the original painting they're more like white clouds but he drops it into his computer and he does all this stuff but this is based on his painting when he was 16 so we had just a lot to chat about and i i got an idea for another story that I would love for him to illustrate, but first I have to write it so, yeah. and sell it, and then he has to like it. So there's oh. a bit of a path. <laughs> well, my fingers are crossed for that happen because this already, I just am obsessed with this picture book. It's so beautiful and the words flow so nicely with the pages and I'm really excited for, for you for this new book. Yay, thanks, me too. Yay. Yay. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It was so nice to eat, meet you and hopefully we can get you in Denver sometime soon because we would love to have you at Second Star. 
We would absolutely love it. I would love that too. Your bookstore just seems like the coolest place with so much going on and like the best people working there. So thank you so much for having me. It's super fun. Of course, absolutely. And the link below in the description is where you can purchase the book through Second Star. So thank you so much, Nell, and we'll see you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.